Welcome back to Special Report and Common Ground. We are thrilled to be in the Senate Agriculture Committee room with our two guests from both sides of the aisle, Senator Debbie Stabenow, Democrat from Michigan, Senator Roy Blunt, Republican from Missouri. Thanks for having us up here. Absolutely. You're the uh, Senate Ag Committee Chair, so That's we're right. happy to be in this room. Uh, but today you're talking about something different, and that is success on mental health. Mm -hmm. Explain that and what happened today. Well, thanks so much for talking about this. This is so important. And Senator Blunt and I have for years led efforts on community health centers, which are a model strongly supported on a bipartisan basis, where you set high quality standards for care and then you fully fund the clinic. But we've never done that on mental health or on addiction services. And so about 10 years ago, I said to Roy, why aren't we doing this? on mental health. We know at least one out of five people in our country are going to have a mental illness in their lifetime. Uh, and addiction is huge. And so we started looking at, well, how could we do that? And we developed what was called the Excellence in Mental Health and Addiction Treatment Act, which sets high quality standards. And then we set about um, putting that in place, with a, starting out with a demonstration project um, in, in eight states and then added two more. Uh, we're blown away by the results on this. If you really fund 24-hour crisis services and work with the police department so that the police, rather than taking somebody to jail, which they don't want to do if this is somebody with a, uh, a mental health problem, they just want to get them help. Mm -hmm. And so taking them to a crisis center or, or making sure they're not sitting in the emergency room with the hospital, which is the other place where we predominantly um, have basically done mental health treatment. Right. It's, it's in the emergency room and in the, in the jail. So this is changing that, fully funding mental health and addiction services as health care in the community. That's, and it starts out with, the, as you mentioned, the 10 states, but you're announcing that it's expanding because you're seeing success. Well, it's expanding. Uh, you know, people always feel like we've got to have a mental health system that works better, but we've really never been able to put a model in place that, that we could prove worked. And we've done that now. You know, as I was uh, telling the group this morning, uh, nine years ago this month, Senator Stabenow and I went to the uh, Senate floor to talk about the last bill that President Kennedy signed into law 50 years ago, now 59 years ago. And it was the Community Mental Health Act. And the goal of that act that was to close the big institutional facilities that weren't serving people very well and replace them with community-based, high-quality mental health facilities where people could still likely be at home, have a job, have the services they need, and not be institutionalized. And the country spent most of the 70s and even in some into the 80s closing those facilities, but very few places uh, offered the alternative. And so this is really back to what's really been a goal for the federal government for 59 years this month. And we had this, this news conference this morning talking about how the other 40 states could join the 10 pilot states uh, and have exactly what the government said we were going to do 59 years ago. And it's even more important now after the pandemic. The right. CDC had these stats. August 2020 to February 21, percentage of adults with recent symptoms of an anxiety or depressive disorder increased from 36.4% to 41.5%, and the percentage of those reporting unmet mental health care needs increased from 9 to 11.7. Um, and most of these are in younger people, 18 to 29, right. which, so it seems like it's crucial at this point. It's, there's no question about it. Um, and what we see are suicides are up. People that having uh, uh, mental health problems, mental illnesses are up. The, the, uh, lo the highest uh, 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 cause of death of so uh, someone age 50 is an opioid overdose. I mean, we're talking about substance abuse issues and so on. So what we're doing with the comprehensive clinics is that where they are, Someone can walk in, just walk in, and begin to get the help that they need for themselves or their child or uh, another member of their family. And they're required to give 24-hour crisis services. They're required to work with the family. They're required to have relationships with law enforcement, uh, work with veterans clinics, to have a comprehensive model with the local health centers to basically mm -hmm. help people where they are with what they need so they can get it early they can get the treatment and services they need, and then 
ideally go on with their life. So this stems from the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and $8.5 billion to expand your, this yes. program. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people look at Capitol Hill and say, this place is broken, it's so partisan, but here you are, Democrat and Republican, and you've worked together for a number of years. I mean, we it have, does we work. We this for 10 years. Actually, the first bill, we were both on the Ag Committee when we came to the Congress together. In the House. In the House. 26 years yeah. ago. And what was the first bill? The first bill we passed it was a, a wheat mold research <laughs> bill. And, Impressive. You know, Very, for, yeah. for some well, communities, it, maybe. It was for well, some okay. communities. All right. Uh, but we did it together, and we've done a number of things together since then. We helped found the uh, Federally Qualified Health Centers uh, Caucus. Uh, mm -hmm. This is another mm -hmm. really important delivery system in our country. You and, also and funded and NIH for yes. a, a it, big a, number. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, you find these things to work together. I think often they don't get the coverage, obviously, that the... Uh, that you can get by being really angry about something as opposed to really getting something done. And this is going to make a big difference in people's lives. The numbers you had right there, the suicide hotline that's been started this year, you know, the, the, the number one cause after unintended accidents, normally car accidents for people under 35, the death is suicide. And, you know, we see so many more challenges with a juvenile mental health and even pediatric mental health after COVID than we saw before. And more adults believe that they have uh, this, uh, this number that NIH used for years, one in five adult Americans has a, has a diagnosable and almost always treatable behavioral health issue. Every number that you're talking about or anybody else is right now would indicate that that number has gone up dramatically in the last five or six years. So when you say, when you hear people say Washington doesn't work, um, do you point to this relationship? You're losing him. He's, he's I'm leaving the Senate. I'm, I'm locking the door. He's not leaving. Yeah. But here's a senator, and there's a few, who work hard to get to yes. It's a lot harder to get to yes than it is to get to no. Uh, are you worried about, you know, the Senate composition? That's you know, I, I do worry about that. I mean, you know, I, Roy thinks I'm kidding, but I'm actually going to lock him in a closet, and <laughs> his his wife, uh, his son, Charlie, can come visit him. But he's <laughs> he's not leaving. Um, but and we have other colleagues as well that I that yeah, I have Senator worked Portman, so closely with uh, Senator Portman on Great Lakes issues and so many other things. Um, I think what worries me the most is somehow this sense of not trusting. Our, our country and the, and, and the way we solve problems in this country, the way we solve them, there are things that we solve by ourselves and then there are things that you have to do together. And uh, the things that we need to do together are done through something called government that has been demonized so much right now. But when we're talking about mental health issues and concerns for a family, concerns about a child, you need someone to help make that happen in, in a way that's effective uh, for you and your family, that's cost effective and so on. There are things, whether it's protecting our air and water or our national defense or you know, the roads and bridges, and, and um, there are things that you can't do by yourself. Mm -hmm. So we do them through this thing called government and we need people in government who believe that and trust that if you reach out in good faith with people, if you keep your word and you work hard, that you can actually solve problems. And that's what we do every you know, day. I think that's right. And I think when you do figure out how to work together, both of your staffs figure that out, and they, they along with you, start looking for the right. next thing you can do together. You know, members, and they know where you're divided. They know where they, absolutely. you're... you're Sure. You have differences of course. On, a, on some big issues. Of course. That's right. But they figure out where you... That's right. And, you know, with people who've gotten to the United States Senate and have had positions that they've developed over years, it's probably not much use trying to talk them out of, out of that. What, you find the common ground and move forward uh, that way. And some, I think infrastructure is generally one of the easier places to do that. Uh, this was, mental health in the past has not been, but I do think the country's finally wrapping itself around the need to treat mental health like all other health, to get, to, get ourselves in a place in society where you can talk about a mental health problem somebody in your family has just as comfortably as you talk about a physical health problem that somebody has. And one of our concerns, frankly, about adding this to the community safety bill 
was telegraphing any kind of message that people with a mental health problem are somehow dangerous. In fact, uh, people with a mental health problem are much more likely to be the victim of a crime than they are the perpetrator of a crime. But when you see these really true tragedies happen, that means that somebody along the way didn't have a mental health network to turn to that where they see someone else going off off uh, off kelter and uh, you you see that in all of these incidents where somebody says well this happened when they were a freshman in high school mm -hmm. we need to have a system where the high school has a place to turn uh, and have the kind of quality help that uh, right. people need to have available to them. Well, and I, I would on, just sure. on that point, just one second, I remember when we used to whisper, somebody has cancer, yes, has cancer, you know. Now people talk about their cancer, their treatments, they, they go to treatment, they come back, they continue their life. We want, in the case of a mental illness, a brain disease or an addiction, mm -hmm. which is a form of a brain disease, really. It leads to changes and patterns in the brain to be something you talk about and you say, yeah, I got some help for that. And my easy, child easy got to help talk for about that. it when you believe you can do something right. about it. Exactly. I think that's one of the reasons cancer, for instance, so many right. progressions have been made. It's not like it's a, it's a death sentence right. or other things you can't do anything about. Right. Where exactly. If you, if you begin to have a sense in society, this is something that's treatable. It's something that's manageable. Right. It's part of who we are, and we need to treat it like we treat all other. And elements. you're seeing things work. I think yes. the criticism always about big government is that it throws money at problems and doesn't see actual things work. You're actually seeing things in these states that are making yes. a difference. In fact, we were blown away. After two years, we asked, I wonder if there's any initial responses. And you know, we were thinking, uh, well, it's too early, right? So we reach out and um, Health and Human Services takes a look. There was a 60% reduction in people going to jail with a mental illness in the communities that had these comprehensive clinics. There was a 63% reduction in people sitting in the emergency room, 41% reduction in people being homeless, and that was after only two years. I mean, we couldn't believe it, that if you actually fully fund quality services and you get law enforcement and, and you know, mental health and community folks together, give them the resources they need, give them the support to do crisis intervention, it was amazing, and that's only gotten better. I mean, the late yeah. Yeah, and, the and numbers big, even more. decline in going to the hospital, yeah. though normally these people, the people with mental health problems, were going to the hospital for some other reason. But if you're dealing with your mental health problem in a way that uh, you're, you're feeling better about yourself, you're taking your medicine, you're showing up for your doctor's appointments, you're mo much more likely not to wind up in the hospital because your mental health uh, part of the life equation is being dealt with just like your kidney dialysis is being dealt with. So as you come to the end of, of your term up here uh -huh. and your time here, um, will you look back at these big bipartisan moments as your biggest successes? For sure. You know, whether it's the uh, research dollars we've done at NIH, what we've done here, the efforts we, I've been able to make as a member of the Intel Committee, uh, all would be among the things that we, we'd look at. Uh, the infrastructure bill that uh, Republicans and Democrats voted for this year. Uh, that's. So are you worried about the Senate after you leave? No. No, I, I, think, I think the Senate, I think we're going to move, get beyond this idea where anger is the coin of the realm and it's, and it's just how angry you are it makes you popular at home as opposed to how you can find out a way to get things done and uh, I think um, this is one example of how much better it is to talk about accomplishment than it is to talk about how terrible the other side is. Mm -hmm. It's actually more fun to actually get <laughs> things done and I feel mm -hmm. like if somebody believes that government is the evil em enemy then why would they even want to be here? <laughs> Go do something else. So Let, we came know. up with this common ground concept because we thought that there was a lot that we just don't talk about up here. That it's and it's crazy. Now people are calling us on the phone saying, you know, could we be a part of common ground? You know, Republican That's and great. Democrat. Mm -hmm. So it does happen. It does. Is the point. It does. Much more. And you know, it's usually not the news story, so thank you so much for doing it. Because what is the news story on any channel is the controversy, is the anger, is the division, it's the fear. That's the news story. And there are a lot of news stories like this. Mm -hmm. And they need to be told because they're the news stories of people working together, caring about each other, caring about 
their communities and but actually getting said, something Senator, done. You're coming up to an election, and both of you are going to fight for your teams. Sure. Absolutely. And, yeah. and fight hard. And yeah. Fight hard. Yeah, there, there's no question. I mean, I, I, I want to be in the majority, and Roy would like to leave with the Republicans coming back in the majority. Um, but there also ought to be a line. You know, there ought to be lines it's somewhere. You know, there, Where that ends yeah, and you start negotiating on something. Right, like. and, and sort of also lines in, in how people talk about each other and campaign and so on. And so, but um, it's um, the most important thing is, you know, as a country, as you know, as a democracy, we got to figure out how to work together uh, and find common ground in the areas where uh, we need to do that. Last word, uh, you have November 14th to the end of the year. I mean, are you we're looking for something to get done? Well, this is one of the things I'd hoped I'd get done this year to, to have to have this this concept move nationally. We're working on something with Senator Heinrich from New Mexico right now and a big restore America's wildlife, which would be the biggest wildlife thing done working with the states. This is actually to keep the federal government out of the states as they have their own efforts uh, to be sure that species don't become endangered. Uh, we've got a handful of things that uh, we're working on and I, I think are uh, going to get done. I want to see uh, our efforts at uh, the National Institute of Health for Research continue to follow the pattern we've been on for eight years now. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope and believe most mm -hmm. of those things can happen. Senator Blunt, Senator Stabenow, we appreciate your time. Thanks Excellent. for coming on Common Ground.